Danny Pedro is so consistent. Look at Danny there. Uh, he's qualified, well, he's actually finished no less than fourth in every single race so far this year. So Danny Pedro is desperate for a win in front of his home crowd. He's got a huge cheer when he walked out. He just nipped out to the loo, cheeky little devil. And on pole position, where are you? But in pole position is Casey Stone. This is his first pole of the year. And he's sitting there pretty looking pretty good. And I know that Yamaha are quite concerned that Casey might well try and clear off because he's got that great grid position. Remember last year, though, he had those couple of chunks out the rear of that tyre. A little bit worried about that Bridgestone rear. Let's just whiz through. Um, is Livio here? No, I, I asked him to come on the grid so I can ask him about Melandria. I bet he won't turn up. Let's see the second row then. Randy Dupunier, that's his best qualifying to date so far this year. Uh, Colin Edwards is uh, on the second row. And, uh, you know, he's been doing great this year. He's been looking awesome as well this weekend. Needs to stay with that front pack. Don't know where he's going. He's not going to the loo as well, is he? What's going on? All right, then. And uh, James Toesland is here in sixth place. Now then. It's been really busy from Mugello. Obviously, that was last weekend coming here to Jerez. There's all sorts of things that have to get done. The riders are all shattered. Everybody else is shattered. But James still had time for this little evening soiree last night. Uh, played the piano. Alex Crevier was there. Sete Gibbonau. Lots of ex-riders and lots of current riders. And I must admit, I did spy Alberto Puig, who's the uh, sort of guru, if you like, for Danny Pedrosa. And he was kind of peeping around the corner. I thought, you know, like with the neck curtains, I thought he was going to send Danny out with his castanets. You know, how competitive they are anyway he didn't and um, James performed a, a stonky night last night fitting a lot in this weekend aren't you um, what was I doing so you, you were playing the piano last oh, night yeah, yeah. Remember? <laughs> so I didn't hear that bit um, it, it was uh, yeah good night last night um, uh, I played the piano for quite a few times I was a bit nervous actually in the open air uh, with a grand piano it's a bit a uh, bit of a stage but uh, I enjoyed it well, they're not used to any class or culture around here so you gave them a bit of a shot but it was really good <laughs> now you've had a bit more um, practice time here so are you a bit happier with the setup of your bike for the race distance yeah I mean it stayed dry all weekend I know it's raining in between uh, but uh, we, we've had consistently dry weather for, for the track and it's been a lot better we've got this new setting now on the bike it's working well we've done a lot of work on Friday and Saturday to get on the second row and, um, if I get the start and get through the first few corners, but I'm sure we can hang in there today. It's, it's a case of really hanging on to that front row here and not letting anybody get away, isn't it? It is. I mean, the, when you've got a first corner that's tight and, and, and a bit tricky, uh, it can spread the field out quite fast. So um, it's all about getting through there safe and, uh, and then get your head down and get with it. Right, get your head down. Look forward to seeing you. Thanks very much. Good luck. Right, I'm going to run now. Not very quickly, obviously. Excuse me. I'm going to run to the fifth row of the grid because that's where John Hopkins is. And you heard that Matt talking about that earlier, that accident he had, very painful. He's got a cracked L4 in his back that's kind of in his spine. Oh, there you are. I'm just squeezing. Hello, excuse me. Oh, we're surrounded by beautiful ladies, Mr. Hopkins. How are you feeling? That's a, a nasty back injury you took uh, the other day. Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm doing all right. I mean, doing the best I can. I'm, uh, you know, the Clinic of Mobile has been helping me out a lot. They've been, uh, you know, servicing me up, getting me ready for the race, and I think we're uh, we're ready for it. Great. How about the grip? Because you were talking about that around the corners yesterday on the apex of the bends. Did you find anything this morning in warm-up? Yeah, we found some stuff this morning in the warm-up, and uh, obviously the conditions are quite a lot hotter. It's a lot drier, but, uh, you know, I think we got the right tire choice. Uh, everyone's on pretty similar tires on the Bridgestone, so, uh, yeah, we just got to go out and give it a go. Okay, superb. Good luck today, John. Thank you very much for chatting with us. Let's scoot backwards. Oh, thank you. Somebody moved it for me. Right, now I'm going to go up to his ex-teammate, Chris Vermoulin, who is uh, up here on the third row. I speak to Paul Denning, because everybody keeps saying, what's going on with Suzuki? Team manager, Paul Denning, what's going on with Suzuki? After six laps, they seem to fade away. What's been happening? That's a fairly accurate description, actually. Uh Le Mans Chris had a really good run and was closing on the front group and it rained and we dropped away and we didn't have the durability we needed in Mugello either and uh, it's a problem we've got to fix, we've got to dial more durability into the tyres but uh, it's not, we, we've made some big steps this year, Loris's race in Mugello was 11 seconds faster than John's was last year but it was only good for 7th place so uh, the other guys have made some bigger steps and we need to do the same. Ben Spees is coming to MotoGP next year, where does he fit in? Well. As regards Suzuki, it's not clear yet, but uh, he is riding a third bike for Suzuki in uh, Laguna and in Indianapolis, and uh, I think those two races will give us a much better impression and understanding of where he's at. It doesn't necessarily mean that one of the boys is out? No, not necessarily. We'll wait and see. All right, thanks, Paul. Thank that's you. very much. Next to uh, Chris is the, is the great man, Valentino Rossi. Can you go in there? Because he's got a, an absolutely ludicrous leather on this weekend. That's his Azuri 
leathers. Uh, they're kind of imitating the leathers that the Italian football team wear. The Euro 2008, do you remember when we used to be in that? That's Valentino's tribute uh, to the Italian football team. They had some problems with qualifying tyres yesterday. I haven't got much time, but I'm just going to... Can I just talk to JB really quickly? JB, some problems turning that bike. Watch him play this down now. Bit of a late night last night sorting that bike out. What were you up to? Oh, we had a few issues in the, the last two sections of the racetrack and we were okay in the first, so uh, we had to fix it. So, uh, what, what did you do? Put a bit more weight on the front of the bike? It, you couldn't get it turning very well, could yeah, you? Yeah, we, we moved the spring rates around a little bit and, and we've got it to turn a little bit better in those bits and uh, we've traded off a little bit in the other sections, but overall it's a better package. Being on the third row obviously isn't ideal here. What's the plan? I oh, get to the front as quick as we can. <laughs> and hang in there and not let anybody get away. More or less, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, JB, thank you very much. Cheers, well, uh, good luck to Valentino. And obviously he's going to be trying to hang on to that front pack. The first turn here can be absolutely evil. Let's get on board now and have a look at the track with that man there.